there are many fun fall activities. And actually, I think in some ways, people will continue to enjoy being outdoors, particularly North Carolina falls are lovely. Um, and as much as we can encourage barbecues, grill outs and things to be outdoors, as long as the weather holds out, I think that would be safer. Um, and frankly, pretty nice with the nice cool weather that we have going right now. I think going apple picking is wonderful. It's a healthy food to eat, um, lots of fun things to do during the activity of apple picking. Um, if you drive with people that are within your immediate family, perfectly safe. Um, once you get there, this will be outdoors. You can certainly distance, and if you had to be on a narrower path where you couldn't be so distanced while you're walking out to the apple trees, um, everyone should be wearing a mask. Um, and then uh, picking our apples and washing them and enjoying them either as a nice healthy treat or perhaps some delicious apple pie uh, would be a wonderful fall way to, to spend time. Family photos, wonderful. Um, with your immediate family driving together and the professional photographer coming separately and maintaining distance. And if they do have to get a little bit close, being sure that everyone has a mask on and then take the mask off for the photos. I think that's a wonderful activity and, and outdoor photos at, at this point in the year are very, very safe. Um, and uh, usually the background and the weather are very nice. So some of our children are back to school. Um, and so if they can be put on a hayride six feet distance with a mask on, I think that's perfectly fine if, if the ride is otherwise safe and well tended to. I think if, if multiple families are getting on a ride that don't know each other, I think that might not be as safe. Um, and a child who has significant immune compromise probably shouldn't be riding that. Or someone in a family who is particularly at risk needs to be more careful about that. I mean, outdoor fire pits are certainly preferable to indoor activities. Um, still, ideally, you'd be six feet apart with people who aren't in your immediate family, because it's awfully hard, I think, to wear a mask out around there. Um, and then also just taking into account your personal and family risks. Uh, folks at high risk probably shouldn't do that at all and be at all close to each other without masks. Um, but those who can sit uh, fairly far apart uh, can, can do this safely, I think. Maybe roast a few marshmallows. If you're with people that are outside of your family, I think hiking is a wonderful activity. If you're on a wide, broad path, like some of the paths around, and can be far enough apart um, without masks on, that's perfect. Um, some of the paths in the woods are wonderful, but a little bit more narrow. Um, and if you are really gonna be right next to someone outside of your family, you probably ought to be wearing a mask just to be sure that as you get a little bit closer, you don't inadvertently share germs, particularly because you may, someone who's young and healthy and hiking may be actually infected and not realize it. As much as possible, not sharing utensils um, or wiping them down with a, a Clorox wipe would be the best way to do that. You know, really best practices for people to bring their own food, even cook their own skewers over the fire um, or clean off and bring their own serving utensils um, to still be able to eat together, enjoy time together, uh, but make sure that they're safe both from COVID and from the usual colds and flu and other things that unfortunately start to pop up this time of year. We've talked about trick-or-treating in our neighborhood a lot, as I know many families have. Um, and I think there are many ways to do this safely. I don't think the traditional pattern of going house to house, maybe even to people you don't know, I don't think that that's a good safe plan. But I think if your plan is having a fabulous costume, wearing a mask, perhaps as a part of the costume, and staying six feet apart from others, and it may include getting candy that someone else has not touched, or it could just be some sort of party or parade, I think all of that is wonderful. So especially if you're new in the neighborhood, I'd walk out and um, at a safe distance, talk to your neighbors and, and kind of ask what they have in mind. Um, uh, we've done that recently and they're still making a decision. But I think if everyone has come together and, and decided on something that they think is safe and makes sense, like either a costume contest or that 
folks will agree that they're putting out safe untouched candy in a bowl or on a tablecloth out in their front driveway and perhaps the people in the house could stand on the porch at a safe distance and uh, cheer them on. Uh, something like that may be very safe but I think it's going to have to be a community plan or perhaps for those in a, an apartment complex they could do that in a parking lot or um, as I said, around a, a nursing home or in another safe place like a park um, so that everyone, no matter what type of house they live in or what type of family they live in, um, could enjoy some way to participate in the trip Indoor costume parties are going to be tough this year. Um, I think they're pretty high risk if it's outside of your family. And unfortunately, we don't want to see the same tick up in COVID cases that we've seen now after Labor Day holiday where folks got together. Um, so I think Zoom parties or outdoor parties, um, kind of thinking about things differently than we did before uh, would be a much safer plan. And we just kind of cross our fingers and pray that next year we'll be able to be back together again, having a regular costume party inside. All of these are going to be complicated this year. Um, and I think there are a couple of couple of key factors or time periods to think about. And one is, how do you travel there? Um, because the process of traveling does incur some risk. Um, and then um, your risk before then, um, just from your daily life. Um, and then your risk of the risk of the people that you would be going to see. Are they very elderly and very at risk? And sharing virus with them would be a big thing then that makes it a lot more risky from a big picture um, and then the mechanism that you travel if you can just drive straight through and get there and, and really don't have much risk in route that's easier and better um, but then you really have to weigh it too with family members who are ill and maybe the last opportunity to see each other so i think we're all going to have to be very good in our communication with our family even before we get together to plan What's the most important part and how can we do this in a safe way? And maybe that does mean we drive when we get together or we drive when we get together with masks or we get together virtually. Um, or we say, you know, we're gonna have to wait till next year for a gathering. I think every family is gonna have to make their own decision based upon what their goals and their risks are. Well, for attending sports, um, I think if you're a low risk person from, from all of the risk factors of becoming very ill from COVID or the flu, um, I, I think it's probably a reasonable risk to go if you have called ahead and understand that the stadium that you're going to is observing all the practices, that they're really requiring masks, that everyone is sitting far apart. And then maybe you wanna consider, is that will they allow me to bring my own food? Do I have to stand in the long lines or, or do something like that to get something to eat or drink while I'm there? Um, and then think about the people you might bring any germs home to. Is there someone else that's high risk in your family? And so you might want to reconsider that. But I think it will be good for everybody to get out and cheer a little bit for their home team. Um, as far as for the athletes, I know um, here at Duke, there's a great deal of testing. We're being very watchful and vigilant. But as far as when you're ch having your children play, I think that's talking with the team's leadership and trying to understand exactly what they're planning to do, how they're planning to monitor for symptoms and exposures. And that's pretty complex and requires a, a conversation between the team leaders um, and the parents about their practices and then their child and family risk. So that's probably the most complex and uh, I applaud people who are trying to navigate that. Well, we recommend every year that um, everyone get a flu shot. Um, and I think this year it's absolutely imperative because, um, first of all, we want everyone to stay healthy and well. And secondly, getting the flu has the same symptoms as COVID. So it's going to set you up for a lot of isolation, a lot of testing that ideally you would avoid. Um, and so the best way to stay healthy, get a flu shot. And then again, the three W's that, that Dr. Cohen is constantly reminding us to do, which is you know, to wear a face mask, um, to wait six feet apart and wash your hands or sanitize your hands as frequently as you can. Um, and I think that's gonna keep everybody healthy over the winter. Um, and it cannot possibly be more important than it is this year.